thing we eat today is genetically modified. Yeah, you heard me right, genetically modified. Whether it be organically grown, genetically modified organisms or not. This leads me to my subject of genetic modification and how it has changed the world we live in. Dean Delapina, on his website access, last accessed on October 30th, 2011, is a professor at Michigan State University and a biochemist. Hopes that one day, tomatoes and broccoli will be bursting with cancer-fighting chemicals and to see vitamins enhanced, vitamin enhanced crops with rice and sweet potatoes. He sees wheat, soy and peanuts free of allergens, bananas that deliver vaccines, and vegetable oils so loaded with therapeutic ingredients that doctors prescribe them to patients who have cardiac and heart diseases. Today I will define the differences between genetically modified organisms and organically grown products, discuss some pros and cons, answer some questions, and explain a few ways that genetic modification is used and could be used in the medical world in the near future. Now let's get started. Most people that believe that when they buy organic that they're buying the better product. Well, that's not necessarily so. The terms genetically modified and organic merely describe the food production method used. Genetic modification is further described as a special set of technologies that alter the genetic makeup of organisms such as animals, plants, and bacteria to show a desired trait, whereas organically grown products are just pesticide free. According to the UN Food and Agricultural Organization, between the years 2001 and 2005, the planting of GMO crops more than tripled worldwide and with 75% of the plants concentrated in industrialized nations. Now that we've defined genetic modification and organically grown products, let's move on to the pros and cons. According to the Human Genome Project, in November 2008, genetically modified crops would enhance taste and quality, reduce maturation time, increase nutrients, yields, and stress tolerances, and improve resistance to disease, pests, and herbicides. Animals could have increased resistance to disease, productivity, hardiness, feed efficiency, and have better yields of meat, eggs, and milk. Effects that genetic modification could have on the environment include friendly bioherbicides and bioinsecticides, conservation of soil, water, and energy, better natural waste management, and more effective processing. Common controversy consists of safety and its potential human health impacts, including allergens, transfer of antibiotic resistant markers, unknown effects, and possible environmental impacts. Now that we've talked about the pros and cons, let's move on to some common questions asked about genetic modification. Who is eating genetically modified food? Well, the answer is everybody. Most people in the United States don't realize that they've been eating genetically modified food since the mid-1990s. More than 60% of all processed foods in the U.S. supermarket include pizza, cookies, chips, ice cream, salad dressing, corn syrup, and baking powder, containing ingredients from engineered soybeans, corn, and canola. Louise Fresco of the Food and Agricultural Organization states that soybeans are the number one top genetically modified organism in existence. How long have we been consuming genetically modified products? According to Jennifer Ackerman on National Geographic in 2011, the answer is that we've been consuming it a lot longer than we think. Humans have been altering the genetic makeup of plants for hundreds of years, keeping seeds from better, better growth periods and then planting them in the following years. Breeding and crossbreeding varieties to make them taste sweeter, grow bigger, and last longer. Are genetically modified products safe? Well, that's kind of a difficult question because it depends on who you ask. Three federal agencies regulate genetically engineered crops and foods. The U.S. Department of Agriculture, the Environmental Protection Agency, and the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA reviews data on allergens, toxicity, and nutrient levels voluntarily submitted by companies. And according to Dean Delapina, last accessed on his website October 30th, 2011, about 100 people die each year from peanut allergies, so you can weigh the risks yourself. If all this information from each organization shows that the new foods are not substantially equivalent to conventional ones, the foods must undergo further testing. Last year, the agency proposed tightening its scrutiny of engineered foods, making the safety assessments mandatory rather than voluntary. Now that we've discussed some common questions, let's move on to the way this technology can help citizens in need. Anybody here like pork? <laughs> Don't lie. All right, I sure do. But say one day you need a heart valve transfer, and you can't get one for some reason. Two competing teams have cloned pigs that have been genetically modified to produce organs more suitable for transplantation into humans. Yeah, you can have a pig valve transplant. Mm -hmm. According to Bijal Trivedi of National Geographic Today in 2002, he stated that pig organs are well suited for transplantation. 
They are approximately the same size as human organs and have similar plumbing, which makes reconnecting blood vessels much easier. Also, the size of the pig litters tends to be large, and pigs produce quickly, reproduce quickly, raising the prospect of a large supply of spare organs. But there's a problem with using these pig organs, unfortunately. They are coated with sugar molecules that trigger ac acute rejections in people. Not really a good thing, right? Human antibodies attach themselves to these sugar molecules and quickly destroy the newly transplanted planted pig organ. Not a cool thing. To circumvent the rejection, scientists are working to produce pigs that lack the sugar-producing gene using genetic modification. Another example of genetic modification is Dolly the sheep. Who's heard of her? Who's heard of Dolly the sheep? All right. Well, the reason she was such a big deal is because she was created from an adult mammary cell. Nice. Okay. <laughs> she was created from an adult mammary cell. So what happened is they took that adult mammary cell, placed it into an embryo or an egg, replaced, uh, taken from another sheep, took out the first sheep's nucleus, put it into the second egg, and it created an embryo. I know it's really exhausting. It goes on and on and on and on. There's three sheep included. Mm. The cell's nucleus was removed and then placed into that egg. So then once the egg and cell melded together, they created the embryo, and then the embryo was placed into the third sheep. Okay. This had never been done before successfully. They've tried it, and they've had cloned uh, mice and frogs, but nothing as diverse as an entire sheep. And the main thing with cloning is that they can reproduce. And Dolly certainly did that. She did it four times. In closing, genetic modification is everywhere in society today, whether it be crops and animals, for consumption or organ transplant. Maybe one day scientists will be able to um, eradicate. Um, excuse me. Maybe one day scientists will be able to grow organs from the patient's own cells. Maybe the waiting list for organ donation will be eradicated. Maybe disease can be cured by genetic modification. Who knows? The scope of this technology has endless possibilities. So today, I define genetically modified organisms versus organically grown products. Discuss some pros and cons about genetic modification answer some common questions, and explain the way that genetic modification is used and technology that can be used in the medical world in the very near future. Remember, everything that we eat is genetically modified.